being from South Central was, was, was those were my formative years. Um, you know, I think you end up taking all of it with you, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and I think that it gives you a, it gives you a, a, a toughness and a resolve, but also a wisdom of how to be able to, you know, interact with people. You know what I mean? Because just like any city or any, any community, you deal with a ton of different people. But, you know, when you come from any inner city, those different people are at different places in their lives that, you know, some people are on the edge. And that edge ain't, you know, a lot of times one that you want to cross. But it's one in which you have to know, you know, you got to know who you're connecting with, when you're connecting with them, and how you're connected with them. Or it could be the difference between, you know, in, in a lot of cases, life and death. Um, and for me, you know, but then you also get to know, like, you know, what real love is. Because the people who, who rock with you and the people who, the community that surrounds you, they're there because they love you. Um, and they, they want the best for you because they want the best for you. And they see the potential in you. Um, those are the things that I do take with me is, you know, the love of family, the love of community, the ability to be able to meet people where they're at, the ability to be able to understand uh, what people have gone through. Um, you know, this, this homeless dude with, isn't a dude who wants to be homeless. He's a, he's, a, he's a victim of addiction. You know what I'm saying? This dude, you know, who's, who's in the hood, who's been locked up and all that, you know, he's not a, he's not a bad human. He's an he's a, he's a, he's a entrepreneur. Entrepreneur sometimes it just didn't have the right opportunity. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, the things that I do try to leave behind is the trauma. Um, you know, understanding that, you know, you're not always in danger or that, you know, not everybody wants to hurt you. You know what I mean? And, and those are the things that, you know, I've, I've tried to leave behind um, and I've worked to leave behind. Um, but South Central will always be a part of who I am no matter where I go or what I do. It's always going to be home. I've been blessed enough to have a lot of friends who are like who the world would say mm -hmm. <clears throat> is successful, are successful, I don't know the right way to say it, but I've been blessed to have successful friends, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, monetarily. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of those people don't have peace. Some of them don't have peace, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So then it's like, yo, how do you define success? I mean, I know people that have a lot of money and, and work so much and you know, they've lost everything, you know what I mean? What profits a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? Well, like, you know, what is success? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's like, yo, how do I, how do I define it? Because if success is like, you know, chasing more cool things to do, mm -hmm. then I'm going to spend my time chasing those things until those things run out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or I could spend it building something that's, that's going to be able to help the generations that come after, you know what I mean? To help the people around me. And, and, and I think when I accomplish that, then I'll be like, okay, you know, hopefully God says job well done. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think you, you getting to that place now and understanding that God is saying job well done. Yeah. You know, I think that's the fruit of, of thinking about what he would want us to do or, or have a, you know, a thought on how we should do something. Yeah. When we, when we, when you look back at it, right, some of the things that teach us, that give you the wisdom that you have now, uh, failures and disappointments. Mm -hmm. I used to look at some of my, I, it used to hurt so much on some of the disappointments. I would call them failures, mm -hmm. not knowing they were just disappointments, right? Now there's some things yeah. I've definitely failed on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what would you say your greatest disappointment or failure, however you want to define it, would be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why is it your greatest? Yeah, man, um, shoot. I th I'll tell you the biggest L I ever took. Okay, I like I like that uh, that verb. You know, Jay Z says a loss ain't a loss, it's a lesson, and, and, and that's how I had to take it. But it was very embarrassing. But when I when I I always say when I left Nike, when I left Jordan Brand, okay, it wasn't leaving. <laughs> it's like yo, you gotta go. For it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and that wasn't through you know yo you 
did something dumb. It was just like, yo, nah, we ain't rocking with you. Mm -hmm. And that was about as public of a firing that, that, that I could ever, that one could go through aside from being like, you know, an, an announcement being put out, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so like, that was probably like the biggest one. Uh, and I, I hate talking about it. Okay. Um, but here's the thing, like, it's a part of the journey. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it took me, like, honestly, it probably took me, like, it's been three years. Mm -hmm. It took me two years to stop being angry. I was about to say another word. Mm -hmm. But it took me about two years to stop being angry Yeah. Um, over that. And it just, it, like, it literally, like, just hit. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, you know, about a year ago, I was like, yo, you got to, you gotta let this go and, and, and appreciate it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Cause like I had so many beautiful things happening, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That I was still like, but I'm holding on to this anger and I'm like, yo, this is, this is God's plan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause, yeah. cause I wasn't gonna leave. If I was unhappy, I wasn't gonna leave. It was a cool gig. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, it's cool. Hang out with athletes, yeah. travel, the, travel the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was dope. Yeah. And, Unless, but I wasn't happy, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and God had to move me out in order to be able to realize what my journey was, you know what I'm saying? And realize yeah. what I had. Cause if, you know, if I didn't, I would still be there. Yeah. And I'd still be complaining. Yeah. I'd probably still be in a little apartment in New York, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Crammed in there with my kid and complaining. And I had, I had that similar when I was at Wyden Kennedy and I really think it's about we want the, the control of how the journey plays out. Yeah, for I sure. I think as men, we struggle with not being in control of something. Yeah. Uh, but that had the same thing happened to me at Wyden. Yeah. Uh, I, I was brought in there really by some great, smart guys. And it was embarrassing when it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was also bitter. But it wasn't, you know, I looked at the failures and disappointments. I was doing my personal work, my foundational work, and I realized I was looking at them wrong. Mm -hmm. Like you can be disappointed that it didn't happen the way you wanted. But then when you look up and you realize, man, there's some things that I was praying for that one, I couldn't have done Facts. if I was still there. Mm -hmm. But then when you go, man, I'm actually in what I was praying for. Mm -hmm. It's a different, it just doesn't matter as much, right? It doesn't. It doesn't. And it's like, yeah, what, what you, what you hold on to is like, that embarrassment is out of ego, you know what I'm right. saying? Right. And ego is like, you know, ego is the, 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 the antithesis of love. Hate ain't the antithesis of love, ego is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And my ego was hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, and then there was a, there was a piece of like, all right, you know, I'm not accepting, I'm not, I'm not good enough. I know I'm good enough. And there's that anger, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and that's, that, that's what happens when you operate out of anger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and then it was just, you know, but, but, but then, but then, you know, you look at it now, you know, three years after, and I know for a fact that if I was still there, I wouldn't have been able to work on, you know, an Oscar winning project. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know for a fact, I wouldn't be able to start my own production company. You know what I mean? I know for a fact, um, you know, I wouldn't be thriving and living the life that I'm happy with, with my family right now, yeah. um, if I was still there. And so, you know, sometimes, you know what I'm saying, things, uncomfortable things happen to be able to realize, you know, what your purpose is, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, but, but here's, here's also things like the things I learned, I'm, I'm sure it's the same with you, like things you learned at White and Kenny and things I learned when I was at Jordan, like, and the people that I met yes. and, all, and all the experience that I had was able to fuel this second half, yep. you know? So nothing happens by happenstance. And it was when I was able to like accept that, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. just, you know, just take it for what it is that I wasn't able to find peace. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and nothing is more important than than finding peace. Yeah. You know Being I mean? able to be content on and content. Sometimes you, a word that used to scare me. Content is not a word that's saying I'm done. Mm -hmm. Content means I have peace on this level yeah. or on this, you know, whatever level I may be at up or down. Mm -hmm. having peace and being content and mm -hmm. continuing to do what you're supposed to do that that's there in that same lane you know there is strength and power and being and going through something mm -hmm. and being able to go through something while still 
handling your responsibilities. Mm -hmm. In that same token, I think there's strength in knowing where you're weak at personality wise mm -hmm. and being able to account for it. Mm -hmm. What are some of your personality or a personality <laughs> or as many as you want to share yeah, yeah, yeah. where you go? Because we all have them. If I'm not accountable to that, it has the ability to tear it down. Mm -hmm. what, are, what were those that you were that you have? Oh, I have a ton. I probably have. Yeah, I have a, I have a lot. Um, I think, uh, you know, one of my biggest one of my biggest pieces is to be able to understand people where they're at and not not push them. And it's, it almost sounds like a bad interview answer because that's kind of what it is. But if it's, it's an honest one. It, yeah, exactly. It is what it is. Um, but I think being able to accept people for where they're at, mm. you know what I mean? And, and understanding that people are who they are mm -hmm. um, and people are on their own journey. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, before I would push people to the to push people who are with me, either push them away or push them to a place where, hey, either you're going to operate at this level or, you know, I it's really, yeah, you just, you know, I don't really care. Yeah. Um, and I think that th those actually hurt more relationships than they than they helped them. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so for for me, like understanding this, this one guy used to always tell me his name was uh, Marco. He was a uh, one of when I worked at Wells Fargo. He was like an older, like kind of big brother figure. He used to always say you have to meet people on a human level. I said, what the hell are you talking about? You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I became like more self aware that I had to understand that you do have to meet people where they're at. Yeah. And that's really what he meant and not treat them as, you know, a way to help you grow or a way to attain your goals or just, you know, somebody that's just there to be able to help you get your success. Yeah. Um, and that's something I always have to be very conscious of because I'm extremely like success driven. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to be great. And if it's not great, I don't want to do it. And if you don't want to be great, I don't really want to deal with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I have to always like keep that in check because that's just you know it ain't cool you have you know what i mean yeah i get that there's a lot of wisdom from what you're pulling from and i think um i'm curious I'm, i appreciate you coming because i love hearing where other people come from when i say the word foundation mm -hmm. what does that mean to you and what does that look like practically mm -hmm. Because you're clearly pulling from a place that is a, that mm -hmm. has kept you on this journey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you say foundation, I mean it's it's literally about what you build on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's for me. It's with the right people, mm -hmm. um, the right plan. You know what I'm saying? And the right purpose. Mm -hmm. That'll be three P's: people, plan, and purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think being able to, once you, once you're able to build a, a strong foundation, like you can, you can build the crib. You can't build a crib. You know what I'm saying? A dope crib. Actually, you can build a dope crib, uh -huh. but if you build it on a bad foundation, yeah. what does it matter? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's the reason why they call Jesus the chief cornerstone. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the most important piece of your foundation. Yeah. And so like, you know, for, for me, and even like now when I'm building my production company, you know what I mean? I'm like, all right, what's my plan? What's my purpose? And who are the right people to be able to, you know, help bring this vision to life? Yeah. And so like with, without a good foundation, like you could build the dopest thing, the sexy thing, you get all the sexy names and doing this and that. But if your, sound, if your foundation ain't, ain't strong, whether it's in life, whether it's in business, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whether it's in relationships, it's going, you know, when shaking comes, cause shake gonna come, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? When the, when the wind blows, you know what I mean? It's gonna blow over. Yeah. And then you ain't really gonna be able to build it back up. There are, there are men that are gonna watch this that understand your background, where you come from and seeing what you've been able to achieve. What would you tell somebody who looks like you from where you're from Mm -hmm. that has the same aspirations and dreams you have, what would you tell them? Um, I would tell them two things. I always, I always tell people to, one, um, believe in your vision. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that a lot of times, if, a lot of times, if you want to accomplish something grand, you have to do it differently. 
And when you want to do things differently, a lot of times people will say that's not the way to do it. Right. Um, but, you know, you have a vision. You know what I'm saying? You have something that, you know, God has placed in you, given to you, you know what I mean, to build, like mm -hmm. believe in that um, and see it through. I, I used to struggle with that. See it through. You know what I'm saying? Same. I did too. Um, I think the second piece is to be able to grow where you're planted. Um, a lot of times people want quick success. Um, people want things to be, you know, sexy, you know, especially now with social media and you be, you know, people, their highlights are out there, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, and people don't see the grind, you know what I mean? Like people may see like all those things, you know, like accolades, whatever somebody does, whatever they drive, whoop de whoop de whoop. Um, but they didn't see me, you know, in 2006 when I was a teller saying, welcome to Wells Fargo, how may I help you? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, they didn't they didn't see me when I was, you know, when I was fired trying to figure out for a year what I'm going to do with a baby on the way and no bread. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, they don't see those things. Yeah. Yeah, but those are the pieces where God has put you, whatever that situation is, to be able to grow you and be able to take that skill set to the next step. You yeah. know, what I mean, I, it's foundational things that I took as a teller that I took as a manager that I took as a VP that I took as a relationship manager, whatever, whatever, as a dude who basically took a gap year figuring out life, all those things led to the place where I'm at now. It's where I'm saying, yo, I'm, I'm now ready to, you know, you know, God said, hey, you a seed here as a teller, let me move you from this pot to another one. But if I was here and I didn't put my all into it to be the best teller that I wanted to be, yeah. I, wouldn't have, well, I wouldn't have been able to get to level two. Yeah, I would have been fired, I would have went back home and who knows what would have happened, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I think that, you know, living out your vision and, and, and really growing where you're planted and doing like the best that you can. Yeah. And I think the third piece is like, you know, look for opportunity and be ready to move when it's time to move. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the big piece. A lot of times, you know, in our community, we don't understand, you know, we we get. Um, we, we feel like we. In many cases, I, I feel like as specifically as, as people of color, black and brown people, our, our, our predecessors were ones who kept a job until they were, you know, 65 and then they retired. Yeah. Um, and we didn't know what, how else to be able to grow professionally. Um, in a lot of cases, a lot of people didn't even have that. You know I mean? I tell a lot of people we're, we're almost like first generation pretty much because of, you know, the crack epidemic and really yep. what that did to our community. You know, a lot of people had to start all over. Yep. Um, so, you know, I would tell people to be able to learn the game and learn how it is and not be stuck or loyal to, to one company, but be able to know how to find your opportunity. And when that opportunity comes, as long as it's purpose and it's right, you know, don't be afraid to jump and take a leap. Samir, I appreciate Bank Teller Samir <laughs> and Oscar winning Samir coming today, man. This has been, I've learned so much about my friend, uh, yeah. but I know what you've shared. It will be received, man. I appreciate it, bro. Of course. Thank you, man. Of course. Appreciate you, bro. Yo. Hey, that was it.